Hi, we're going to demo here how to install the NSFilter HTTP HTTPS um, proxy uh, with categorization and um, with content filtering for uh, PFSense. Um, it's a it's an alternative to the Squid and Dance Guardian Squid Guard um, open source packages. So a um, couple pre prerequisites: uh, you'll need to go to NorthShoreSoftware.com and obtain a license key. Now this can be had. There's a 30-day trial license you can get for free just to demo this out. Um, and if you do have any questions or problems during it, go ahead and send um, emails to info at northsourcesoftware.com and we'll get you set up with whatever's needed to get this working for you. So a um, couple things we should mention. Uh, it is required that you have the AMD64 platform. If there's demand, we'll go ahead and build it for i386. Um, but most efforts right now are, are being put towards AMD64 and getting everything working in the 2.2 PF Sense release. Um, uh, some really cool things coming in 2.2. We're going to be able to cluster uh, multiple boxes together and uh, should should have basically unlimited scalability, which will be very nice. So for now, this is in the 2.1 um, branch of PF Sense. Um, it's a very simple install. The package is currently not hosted on the PFSense um, package repo, so we've got to set up a private repo, um, which PFSense allows us to do. It's actually very easy. If you go to System, Packages, and if you do Package Manager, I'm sorry, PKG underscore MGR underscore Settings, it's a hidden page in PFSense. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to use repo.northshoresoftware.com for our package repo um, for right now. After you're done with this, you can uncheck this, set it back, and you'll, be, you'll have the um, standard PFSense package repo set up. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to come in here. We should see the NSFilter package. That's the only package this repo has. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install it. Now this this is a uh, virtual machine running in the same data center that has the uh, repo. So it's about an 11 meg download depending on your connection and your processing speed, how long that'll take. Um, it's going to go very quickly here as you'll see. That's it. Package is installed. So we come to services, NS filter. We get a warning about not having a license. So the license that we've previously obtained from NorthShoreSoftware.com, we're going to paste in here, and we're going to save. Now, um, just to be safe, there have I have seen some errors where the you'll get blocked because of an invalid license. To prevent that from happening, I'm just going to go ahead and restart the NS Filter service from the Status Services menu, and. It takes about 10 seconds, I think it was 5 seconds of sleep time and the start and the stop, so it's restarted. So now, we're going to come back to NS Filter. A little detour there. License, we'll see we have 10 users, it expires in 30 days from now. So, we're not going to mess with anything other than the HTTP, HTTPS settings for this demo. But, as of right now, if we just click this box, that's it. We can point our browser's proxy configuration to connect to the PFSense box on port 3128 and our connections will actually be proxied at this point. We're going to take that a little bit further with this demo and what we're going to do is we're going to enable the transparent proxy for HTTPS and when we do that we have to enable a different listening port for the transparent proxy to work on. Um, we're going to do 3128 for HTTP, 3129 for HTTPS in this scenario. Um, the other thing we should mention is when you do HTTPS filtering, uh, you will need to import a trusted CA root certificate into your clients. So that is actually this certificate right here. Um, we have this, the certificate and the key. Um, I would suggest that you use the actual system CA manager, cert manager, and create a new CA and, and uh, populate these fields with that data. Uh, instead of using these defaults, but for this demo we'll go ahead and use these defaults. So I'm going to take the CA certificate, which is the top uh, field here, copy that into a new file, 
not in OneNote, in Notepad. And I'm going to save that as, uh, let's call it nsca.cert. Yep. And I'm going to save it as all files. There's already one there because I've walked through this once before. And then the next thing we need to do is actually import that into our browser. And I'll go ahead and, oops. I'll go ahead and do that in uh, Chrome here. Um, Chrome, all you need to do is go to settings, type in certificates, manage certificates, trusted root certificates, root certificate authorities. Click next, browse to the CA cert that we've previously uh, just saved. Go through, import that. And now in our trusted root certificate authorities, we see the North Shore Networks uh, CA that we just imported here. So our browser is now ready. NS Filter is now ready. Let's go ahead and save these changes down at the bottom here. Now what we need to do is redirect our port 80 traffic to port 3128 and our port 443 traffic to port 3129 in order for it to be proxied. So let's go ahead come into NAT here. I've already got a rule created. Let me go through this again though. Um, you're most likely going to use the LAN interface. This is the interface that the clients sit on. Um, what we're doing is we're taking traffic from that interface bound for, I say, any, and on HTTP ports, we're going to redirect that to the local host of this PF Sense box on port 3128. Okay, I'm actually, this, this, PFSense instance is in a data center, so I'm actually connected on the OpenVPN insta uh, interface, so I'm going to go ahead and set that here. But you will most likely set the LAN interface. So let me go ahead and save that, apply that change, and we're going to come back in here and go to Services, NS Filter, go to Real Time. It shouldn't have anything in there yet. Oh, we got a couple requests coming through. So now I'm going to go create another tab over, well, sorry about that. We'll go ahead and do this. We'll go to CNN or something like that. And you see, you'll see you see in the real time here all these um, requests coming through. Now, these are being proxied. Now, let me go ahead and minimize this window. By default, there's, there's a policy for HTTP um, by default. And that has certain categories uh, blocked. We'll see, we have hate speech, illegal drugs, pornography and sex, religion, spyware. Um, you can go ahead and set these categories whatever you want. You just have to control click them and add new categories. Um, and in here, you can actually set a custom block page. We're just going to use the default one, the global one. So let me go through this a little bit, actually, what we can do here. We have a bug which we need to fix that has safe search in here twice. But what this will do is, and these are all HTTPS sites, but let's say we set force Google search, Google safe search, force Yahoo safe search, and force Bing safe search. This will, will force all these search engines to turn on their safe search feature. Um, and I'll display that in a little bit. Um, YouTube for schools is a product that you can put in your school's YouTube for schools ID. And it'll only allow YouTube videos that you've that you or your teachers have designated um, to be shown. Um, so we have whitelist and blacklist features here. Now you can keep lists of different objects. So we we all have these set to none, but you can keep a list of URLs that you want to either blacklist or whitelist, and um, apply them here. We do content types, so you can have like application, octet stream, or something blocked. Um, file pattern, if there's certain file pattern names that you want to block, you can put those in here too, and it just does a simple regex look up on those. Um, I'll get into that more later. If you have questions on it, any of this stuff, just email info at northshoresoftware.com. So I'm going to go ahead and save this policy. So we're going to go back to real time. Now we know what we had blocked, I believe it was like... Uh, Let's try Playboy. That's a simple one. 
So Playboy actually is redirecting to HTTPS, so we'll try something else. Um, what would be blocked? Um, I don't know anything that's going to be HTTP at this moment that would be blocked. But um, here we go. This one. There we go. So we see a blocked post now. And you'll see it in here. You can actually click on these as links. It'll forward you to that page, and you'll see the block as well. It's just interesting. You can also search in here for, um, let's say, of the last 100 lines of logs. Show me the stuff that's blocked. And you'll see all those show up here. So um, kind of a cool little utility to see who's going where. Um, you can do users, which I will show in another video at some point. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do HTTPS now. Now I've already imported the certificate on my browser. Uh, we need to create a NAT role for that. And one thing I'm going to do that's a little bit different for this rule, so you can actually just go ahead and copy our HTTPS rule. And what we're going to do is just, I'm sorry, HTTP rule. We're going to switch it to HTTPS. We're going to switch it to port 3129. But one thing I want to make sure that we do here is the destination is we don't want to use any because in this instance we're connecting to our pfSense box on HTTPS so we don't want that traffic redirected to the proxy so in order to do that we do an inverse match so we're saying any address that is not the LAN address which allows us to get continue to connect to our pfSense box with this NAT rule so um, you can also use these rules um, if you have certain hosts that you want to exclude. You can create aliases, exclude hosts from filtering. Um, it's it, I mean you have all the the flexibility of the pfSense rule creation to decide what traffic goes to the proxy or not. So let's go ahead and save that. So now our HTTPS traffic should be redirected to the proxy. We'll go ahead and apply that, and we'll go ahead and let's do Yahoo. So we come to Yahoo, website pops up. Now, what we're going to look for here is the certificate information on this site. So we go to connection, we go to certificate information, and you'll see our certificate was issued by our certificate authority. So on each request, that certificate authority is used to generate a new certificate, which is served to your clients um, through the proxy. Now this gives us the ability to block stuff like Yahoo and Facebook that is HTTPS, um, as well as uh, we, we're going to have logging on all this um, information as well. It, it's going to come through the real-time uh, logs as well. So here we see HTTPS traffic coming through. Um, there's only going to be one session here. You'll see, you know, we have an HTTP byte count coming through as well. So this is just a quick demo of what can be done with the NS filter um, proxy.